point, we want to establish God's kingdom, God's government here in Montreal and shift things into a better direction. And guess what? When we preach the gospel, Jesus is right there to confirm it and to say, this is the truth. Amen. And that's when we have signs, wonders, and the marvelous things that happen. Okay? Yeah. So this is one of our core verses, Acts 1-3. He showed himself alive. So he, he didn't die. He showed himself alive for 40 days. For a period of 40 days. We, we, uh, here it says many proofs. Some, some versions say undeniable evidence. Mm -hmm. Undeniable evidence. I like that. So, so we, we want to, to manifest Christ with undeniable evidence. And one of the ways we show it, it, it's when, you know, just a small group of people gets together and they say, yes, this is what we want. We want to establish God's kingdom. We want to move forward. And this is what's going to happen. Now, I want to introduce to you or Aurel Fraser. Aurel, come here. Can we all share something to you? Wow. I like what you said. It was very good. I like to see everybody here. It's great. It's great to see everybody come together. Traditional church? Yeah. Traditional church, it can be hurtful. And a lot of people have been hurt. A lot of people, but if you look just at the Catholic Church right now, churches are empty because the people have been hurt. They've been hurt by control. They've been hurt by all sorts of things. People need a new, new way. And actually, it's not a new way. It's the original way. We need to get back to originality. We need to get back to God. I keep hearing, we are the church. Do you know that we are? I go to work, just to give you an example. I walk into work, people see me, they know who I am. Not because of the way I talk on the phone or whatever I do. It's they know who I am because they've seen God work through me. I walk and work, and the first thing I do, I go there sometimes two hours early. And people wonder, why are you doing here two hours early? You only start at 10 and you're here at 8, 8.15 at the latest. Well, from 8.15 to let's say about 10 o'clock, I go around the floor. And as I walk around the floor, people stop me and ask me, can you pray for me? And I do. I don't complete the prayer. God completes the prayer. God touches those people mm -hmm. as I walk by. <clears throat> people around them see that. People around them come to see me and say, you prayed for her, can you pray for me? See what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. Everyone here, you are an influence wherever you are. People are watching you. If you say, okay, I'm, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, they're going to say, really? All right. I'm going to watch you, see if you really believe in God. And they keep looking at you, and they need to see a difference in you. And when they see that difference in you, the first thing they do is they flock to you and say, why? Can you do that for me? Can you pray for me? And when you do, like the pastor just said, God is there to answer that prayer. See, when I, when I first met God, I made a deal with God. I don't think I'm supposed to make deals with God, but I did. That's who I am. And that's how God made me. When I talked with God at one point in time, God, I said, God, I said, your word. He said, I'm faithful to my word. Every promise that's in that book, I will keep. I go, all right. So then he looked at me and he said, Aral, 
If you are not afraid to stretch your hand and pray for people, he says, I'm not afraid to heal you. And he said, I will always follow my word. So I said, okay, let's try it. Let's test it. <laughs> right away, I tested it. I, went, I was sat in the church, and the guy in front was giving a Bible study, and he had a really bad headache. And I looked at that, and I looked up, and I said, okay, let's see if this works. <laughs> I went right to the front, and I said, do you mind if I pray for you? He said, no, go ahead. Now, I'm a brand new Christian. He said, no, go ahead. Put my hand on his head, prayed for the pain to go away, took my hand off. He looked at me and he said, I've got no more pain. Amen. I looked up and I went, wow! You are real. You, you do work. That was quite a long time ago. And God has never stopped. Every time, he's there to answer. He has never broke a promise in his word. Amen. This ministry is exactly about that. It's about each one being the church. It's about each one here that are willing to say, you know what, God? I'm going to put the world aside. I'm going to follow you and see where you lead. And believe me, you're not going to be disappointed where he's going to lead you. You want to see this world change? And, I, and I'm looking at the world and, and I see the pain. I see the hurt. I mean, just go in the metro and look at the people that are sitting next to you. The pain that is in their face. The hurt that is coming out of them. Do you know that you can make the difference? You're there in that metro at that time for what reason? You're there to make the difference. You're the church. This is what this ministry is about. For you to become what you were supposed to, or what you are originally uh, planned by God was that you make a change wherever you are. Could be students, yes. We're in a building where there's students. This is perfect. The next generation. The next generation are going around and they're saying, where are we doing, where are we going? Why are we here? You have the answer. Everyone here has the answer. Look back. What did God do for you? The song that we, we sing, and the, and the song's Amazing Grace. When he gets to the part where he says, my chains are gone. Do you know how many people out there have chains around? Look at the face. You'll see the chain. People carry so many, so much baggage. <coughs> One of the, the ministries that I saw on the website this morning is called Freedom Ministry. Freedom Ministry is a ministry that is going to work in this, this environment. And that ministry is to remove the baggage. We've done this weekends, me and my wife, where we've seen people come in there on a Friday night and it's like you, you would say the people are, you know, in the movies that you see where the, the prisoners go in the bus <laughs> and they go into jail and you see that, that, that pain and uh, the, the hurt and they don't, the unknown. That's what we get with those people that come in on that Friday night. And we see them come in with all that baggage, all that luggage that they carry. And it's, it's squashing them. And they get there on a Friday night and that's the attitude they have. Then we look up at God and say, okay, Lord. <laughs> see, we made a deal with God too also. Is God, 
The Freedom Weekend is yours. We just show up. You do the work. Amen. And that's what he does. Amen. So God starts. The minute the people come in there, he starts. Actually, he started before because he drew them there. So he starts. And he starts. And he works. And through the word, strictly with the word of God, through the word of God, these people's lives are transformed. By Saturday night, those people are flying. They are actually floating on a cloud of glory. Only God can do that. And God does. Because He wants to set His people free. He came to what? To set the captives free. The world right now is captive. We need to bring the freedom to them. <clears throat> this is what this ministry is going to do. First thing we need to do, we need to think that out of the box, out of the building, we are the church. We are bringing. Because who's in you? I really want you to think about this question. Who is in you? When you said the salvation prayer, what's the promise? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Go where? They go where? In your heart. So if it's in your heart, uh, you are all alive, yes? So you have your heart. Where's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? They're in your heart. How much power are you carrying inside? Think about it. How much power is in you? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If they're with you, who can be against you? Amen. This ministry is based on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All the power is right here. Right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the devil cannot come against him because God is here. Amen. God is in each one of you. Time to let the power out. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to church, church, sitting in a pew, singing, receiving word of prophecy, and then walking out, going back. Going through the metro. You even take the metro. You're in the metro and all of a sudden there's a person with a broken leg next to you. Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> you know what you need to change? You need to turn around and look at that person and say, you know what? Do you mind if I pray for you? You know what? That's the first reaction that you should have. If you don't have that reaction, time to get it. It's time to get it. It's time to connect back to God. Because when you're connected with God, what His plan is for this world is now. The church is not working. It really isn't working. Because a lot of people are hurt. A lot of people are they're there for their own ministry. They're there for, uh, to get glory, to actually get glory. Mm -hmm. Oh, pastor, that was such a beautiful sermon. Oh my God. Ta -da, ta -da. And the, the person ends up with, uh, he has to go buy a toque because his hat doesn't fit in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Yes. And unfortunately, that doesn't build people of God. No. What it builds is ministries, ministers, and so on and so forth. It's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, it's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. What God wants right now is, you're the church, time to show it. Mm -hmm. It's time to be what God has called you to be. Mm -hmm. This ministry will develop that. From apostles, evangelists, pastors. The main what the main goal of God was go and make 
disciple. What's a disciple? It's a person that mirrors what God has given you. And you give it to them. You help them develop it. This is what it's all about. This is what this ministry wants to do. Traditional church? No. But God church or God leading? God's plan? God's agenda? Yeah. That's what we're looking for. And I'm glad that you're all on board. Transform from here. And let God do the rest. We don't have to do it. God will do it. But God's looking for open hearts. Willing hearts. Open your heart. Amen. Amen. Amen.